And once it says that, it starts. Okay. All so right. now it's... Yeah, we're here. A uh, very unconventional Thanksgiving episode. We finally finished our Thanksgiving. I've eaten meat being ate a month ago. <laughs> Expl explain to me the Canadian Thanksgiving again. Uh, it's... I think it falls on, like, Columbus Day, if that's in the second week of October. Gotcha. But, but that's when Canadian Thanksgiving is, and it's the same holiday, it's just earlier. Yep. Gotcha, you just come over, you eat a bunch of food with your family, and then you think about all the stuff you have. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's good having the stuff we have, being able to do a show, being able to have all this stuff, having access to all this stuff. Sean has been badgering me for the better part of a month to check out this d d DC-20. And I'm going to take a look at it. And I have Meepian here with me. And we'll see however long this takes. Yeah, I got a little daunted when I got to the DC-20 overview video. Mm. And I, I clicked on that and I was like, okay, this will be a, a good way to get some some perspective. And it's an hour and 38 minutes. It's like... <laughs> No, I don't think I going to give you an hour and 38 minutes for that. Yeah, I had it playing in the background. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is... I'm completely blind. I haven't looked at this at all. So I'm going to take a look at it now. All right. This is a blind schmuckhead's reaction to looking at all this. Sean has sent me all this stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to screen record anything because I kind of... I kind of value this project, and I don't want any of this stuff to be shown. Uh, now that sounds kind of, like, kind of like an asshole thing, because, like, why am I showing, like, werewolf books? It's because, like, werewolf is a 20-year-old game. I swear that stuff should just be available to the public already. Um, if you want to support this guy, just go to his Kickstarter. I think this is up on Kickstarter. I gotta figure out the link to that again. I'll post it somewhere in the description. Okay. Right. Let's, take, let's have a look see. I'm going to click the character sheet. All right. I automatically like the production value I'm seeing. All right, player name, character name, level, ancestry, background, class, and subclass. All right, this all makes sense. All right. What am I looking at here with the prime? All right. Save, CM, highest awareness. Physical save. Oh, yeah. Sean was telling me there were only... Four attributes in this game. I'm seeing that now. Uh, might, agility, charisma, and intelligence. Yeah. And there's... I'm assuming they've repped constitution into strength and made might. Agility, that makes sense already. And then no wisdom. It's just part of intelligence now. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. Because, mm -hmm. like, there's... Uh, like in Warhammer, there's mm -hmm. a, a definite difference between agility and dexterity. Yeah. And it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it, it's, 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 how fast you move on foot doesn't tie into how quickly do your hands move when you're reloading a gun. Yeah. Or like dwarves are notoriously bad at agility, which is your can you balance on a log? Can you squeeze through a <laughs> a hoop? But I have very high dexterity, which is, can I craft with my hands? Can I thread uh, a needle on my first try? Uh, can I perform a surgery on somebody where I have to carefully cut the arteries around his heart without stabbing him? Oh, this is kind of fun stuff. It looks, this looks even more comp compartmentalized than D&D 5e, because uh, there's only, well, I'm glad there's at least two strength-related skill checks, athletics and intimidation. I've always kind of thought intimidation, that could have been a, a strength ability too, because you look at a, like an orc, for example, and he flexes his muscles, and you don't want to fuck with that guy, because he's super muscular. Um, seeing that it's that it's strength and only strength here. Well, at the same time, what if I want to play as a psycho character who says something scary? Hmm. I guess I'll be influenced down in charisma. 
No, all this too. Could be. So, so saves. You just got a general physical save and a general mental save. And looking at this, agility, acrobatics, trickery, and stealth. No sleight of hand. I would assume that would be trickery. That uh, makes sense a, to me. There was, a, there was another dexterity based check. I'm trying to remember what it was now that I'm now that I am at slipping my mind. Alright. Alright, so this this looks okay, this all looks okay. Um Animal Influence and Insight. Insight's charisma? This is very puzzling. Hmm. Mm. Uh I guess that's your social skills. So insight is a social skill. I uh, I suppose it's it's strange that's charisma to me. And then yeah. animal handling is now charisma, where I guess that makes sense. And then just the general influence ability. So I guess that's perception, deception, and performance all in one. Hmm. I guess. All right. And now we've got all the intelligence checks. We've got investigation, medicine, survival. Arcana, history, nature, occult. Uh, I'm glad we have a, a dedicated occult stat again. Religion, and then a blank where you can just fill in whatever you want related to the campaign, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, although I don't... In a campaign that has an arcana skill, I don't know that an occult skill is going to be significantly different. Well, I guess it's the difference between... Between wizards and warlocks and sorcerers, I suppose that's the case, because uh, we've checked out Mage the Ascension, and you know there's a massive difference between the Akashic Brotherhood and the Order of Hermes when it comes to casting spells. Mm -hmm. like, the, like, like the Akashics don't believe in the Demiurge, and wherever they cast a spell, they aren't drawing circles. And I guess occultism in this game, since it's D and D, would be more about devils, demons, and yugoloths, I suppose. Because uh, the way the way magic works in D and D five e is that it's you don't have the ability to cast magic. Instead, as a wizard, you're replicating it through the spellcasting components and focus. And then the sorcerer has the birthright. The warlock has the bargain. And the bard is that you have to play a song to recreate the spell, or say a magic word. And then the druids and the clerics, it's a, it's a gift for your devotion. And then the artificer, it's not magic at all. It's just you using devices that causes a magic effect. It's like, it's like the it's like magic quote unquote in Final Fantasy seven VII and eight. Is how I understood the artificer. So, I I like it. I could see why it could be seen as a little bit much. I, I like it. Meepian doesn't. Oh, I didn't say I didn't like it, but uh, I probably don't. All right, gotcha. Uh, it's a maybe leaning towards a no. Yeah. Yeah, I just Ray? think that the, there's so much overlap between the two abilities that they're, uh, they don't need to be separate. Well, if we were to swap out occultism with something like, uh, let, we'll just get rid of Ar Arcana entirely. Let's just put occultism in its place instead. What was taken out from? Hang on, I know exactly what could be here instead. Science. Yeah, hey, you could put that in there instead. Okay. Yeah, because you know you can't. You you can be a wizard, but wizards don't have heal abilities. And you look at somebody who's bleeding out, and you say. Oh, um, I guess I just need to bleed him out a little bit more, and then his blood will stop as the wizard. But no, if you had a science skill, you could say, "Oh, this guy, um, it's very clear that his carotid artery has been severed. I know exactly how to patch that up." And that could be there instead. I know you have like a fill in the blank skill, but they probably could knock off or kind of put science there instead. Um. Well, then I would argue that medicine and nature fill those. Niches as well, just as well. Uh, yeah, we probably could put a medicine stat in here too. Be knowledgeable about yeah, medicine. yeah, medicine in, is under investigation. All right, gotcha. Oh, yeah, investigation's missing. I've noticed that right now after you said that. No, uh, investigation's no, it's... there. No, no, it's yeah. there too. Yeah, okay. All right, so looking at that. All right, investigation. Well, it looks like with those stats, it seems that intelligence is way more important of a stat in this game now. 
Because you know in 5e, you could just get through an entire game with just a party of idiots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I'm playing a, sure. game on, playing a game on Tuesday, and it, you know it's a shame when the monk is the smartest person in the party with an intelligence of 12. Hmm. <laughs> you got a paladin, druid, sorcerer, and ranger who just don't know stuff. The druid who doesn't know his nature checks. All right. Well, that's, that's got me wondering now, what's the druid going to run off of intelligence? I or would imagine so. Or is there a druid in this game? I don't know, we haven't even gotten to classes yet. All right. Uh, yeah. Trades down here. Right. We can get more economic with D&D. Looking at the trade section, I am assuming you would put your different tools there, like your thieves' tools, smiths' tools, cartographers' tools. That's where that would be. No, that too. Yeah. Where would you put proficiencies for your weapons, then? It's only a one-page sheet. Where's the proficiencies? I guess it just comes with the class? It's kind of like the kit system from D&D2E? Could be. Yeah, I don't see any proficiencies anywhere. Gotcha. Now there's a language check. All right, linguistics, a D20 plus your intelligence or charisma. And you can know up to four languages. Well, that's probably how much I'd be able to memorize as well. But you can have wizards that know six different languages. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Worldwide with the wizard. <laughs> okay. Then what else yeah. do we have here? Um, stamina. Oh yeah, Sean told me about that, where the, the all martial classes have maneuvers that run off a stamina point system in this game. And your stamina will always stay low, but you have those at the very least. And there's no longer spell slots, there's a mana point system in this game. I like the difference between Dark Souls and Dark Souls 3. Yeah. Or I like it, but I don't like it at the same time. I mean, the spell, the spell slots is easier to manage, and it really brings down the casters. I feel like casters in D&D 5e are way too damn powerful. Way too strong. So the mass point system brings them, brings them back down to size. Well, it depends on how many points of mana they get per, per level and what spells cost. So we'll have to figure that out. I'm also thinking about hybrid classes now, like um, Pathfinder had the Spellblade. Um, was it called the Spellblade? No, it was called the Magus. That's what it was called. And you, ha you, you can have like a balance between the two with that one. I'm also imagining like, what the Paladin look like now? Mm, okay, now, now my interest is being piqued. And you've got a mental and physical armor class. Okay. And there's a DR stat here too, which is which operates it operates like a damage threshold. It's like your your armor points of World of Darkness, where that will automatically soak up however much damage you take from an attack. Okay. Alright, like that this. And then hit points or hit points. Uh dead saves. It looks like you can fail this well, looks like five times, six times, and then you end up dead. Yeah, uh, at least it's five boxes. All right, gotcha. And it's combined with exhaustion. And combat, there's your different dice for your, I guess, your different attacks. And action points, okay, the, I, this looks fine, this all looks fine. Attacks, three different attacks. Movement speed, jump speed, jump distance. Well, it's good that we finally have that dedicated box for that now, because I've had to stop so many different games just to answer how far can I jump. Yeah, that's uh, surprisingly how often that comes up. Yeah, we that same Tuesday game I brought up, uh, our paladin has a ring of jumping, and every time he uses it, he needs to be reminded just what exactly the jump is in D&D &D 5e. He's... Right, because the spell is still based on the, your physical jump. Yeah. And it has to go off of your strength stat. Uh, inventory features your feats. A little small, but yet yeah, good. And then currency. I suppose you can help. You now have uh, multiple types of currency. It's it's always strange to me that D and D everybody uses gold. 
as a currency. Yeah. But, uh, you remember one of the best things about 40k is that the orcs use teeth as a currency. Hmm. It's the best thing, too, because orcs grow back their teeth it's just very slowly. So you could just punch a guy's teeth out, and then, behold, he has however much money that's in that pile of teeth that he just spat out of his face. And then he picks that up and then uses that as tinder. And so, yeah, okay, I, so the sheet's a little strange, but I like what I'm seeing so far. All right. Now let's click DC20, the alpha. What does this do? All right. Uh, big art. All right, DC20 is just a 0.4 version. Uh, oh, I see it's a little hyperlink table of contents. Ah, okay. How do, how do you program that? i got to figure out how to do that. That could be useful with um with our book that we're releasing soon. Um, contents, note from creators. Okay, we support. Okay, how to support. Where does it say? Is there a... Yeah, the link's right there. All right, open link in new tab. All right, there's your Kickstarter. Um, how much money have you raised so far? Well, I guess they met their goal because I don't see a place to download. Um, I mean, donate. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. I, I think I might be missing something. Maybe you need an account? I don't use Kickstarter, so I don't know this. Well, I'll just cut that link, say, paste it in uh, Discord for later. <clears throat> All right, what else do we have here? Can't get off of this. All right, we're looking at the at the book now. Uh, all right, let me. I'm a little zoomed out. Can I zoom back in? Can I zoom in. Zoom me in. All right. Okay. There we go. Okay. And let's go through this book one time. You look at this with me. Yeah, I was just on note from the creator. All right. Note from creator. All right, it says support me. Support me. All right. There's a, there's a YouTube channel. There's all the stuff. All right. Good to see. Attributes. Okay, might, agility, intelligence, charisma, we already saw that. Attributes, as your player character levels up, they're likely to gain more points upon to attributes. PC gain plus one attribute points at levels 2, 4, 7, and 9. And gain plus two at 5 and 10. Ah, okay. This character progression table. Let's see. Okay, we'll just look at the table later. Um, attribute scaling. We have other oh, little plus limits, like a... Kind of like D&D 2 in a way. Right, this looks like a like a weird synthesis between 2 and 5. Alright. Your might stat. Mm. Heavy weapons and heavy armor have a, a might requirement. Okay, that's good. Uh, so you had that with uh, heavy armor in 5e. While wearing heavy armor, your might is added to your physical defense. Ah. You gain a point uh, to your health points. You gain a bonus to health points equal to your might. Okay, good. Uh, it is strength and constitution. Enrolled one stat at this point. Uh, checks made to initiate or escape grapples use athletics. Might contributes to jumping, throwing, and encumbrance. Might saves are made to resist effects that push, push you away, knock you down, and crush you. Okay, that makes plenty of sense. Agility. A ranged weapons, whips, and a certain... Special weapon, have a minimum agility requirement while wearing light armor or no armor. Your agility is at your physical defense. You gain a point to your health to your health points with uh, every point of agility. Alright, I didn't know that. Well, I guess that's pretty nice to have. Uh, checks made to escape grapples use acrobatics. Agility saves are made to resist effects that cause you to lose your balance or can... Or something that can be used to successfully dodge. Okay, that makes sense. Charisma. Well, that's like charisma's pretty small in this game. Your charisma is added to your mental defense. Uh, charisma contributes to the mana points granted by the spellcasting feature. Social skill checks use charisma. Charisma saves are made to resist effects that attempt to dominate your mind or alter your emotions. Alright, so... Did they combine wisdom and charisma, then? It looks like a little bit, yeah. All right, this is very peculiar. Right, intelligence. Your intelligence is added to your mental defense. Intelligence contributes to bonus and mana points granted by the spellcasting feature. Intelligence can contribute to a language check. Being able to discern if something is an illusion or not. Intelligence saves are made to resist effects that 
attempt to read your thoughts, alter your memories, confuse you, or use illusions to deceive your senses. Well, it looks like wisdom was cut in two and then split between charisma and intelligence. Yeah. Hmm. And then looking at what what else do we have here? Um, prime modifier, right, attack checks, spell checks, save DC. Prime off. Okay, so this is like your proficiency bonus with a prime. All right, prime off fire rouses you to. Okay, well, where do you get your prime off fire from? It is equal to your highest attribute. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, so your proficiency bonus kind of like combines with that. Okay, I see what this is. All right, the prime off fire allows you to create the kind of character you truly want to play without negatively impacting the combat ability. Well, I guess like proficiency bonus did that too. But I, I guess, like, if you want, um, like, a jack-of-all-stats kind of character... Well, well now, that I, now that I'm, like, kind of thinking about it, would, would this game be... What would be better, the proficiency bonus or the prime modifier? Well, I guess you could get uh, way more bonuses right out the gate, depending on how you built your character. So, I guess, like, a plus three instead of a plus two? I'm thinking this over. I'm running this through my head. Yeah, it would really depend, I think, on what the numbers look like. I guess so. Like, uh, like how many points you get for skills and... I guess I need to play this to figure out if I like it or not. Alright, and then your skill list. It looks like there's a prime skill in here that rolls off of awareness. I'm assuming awareness is what you would use for um, initiative in this game. Well, at least I'm mm -hmm. just going to assume right off the bat. All right. Uh, skill checks. All right. Uh, well, I, well, I think we've already gone through the skill checks. I think we already know what all this stuff does. Yeah, but I wonder what the mechanic is. All right. So, looking at the skill checks. So, it's, um, if two creatures are wrestling each other, to use athletic skills to compete against each other. I guess it's the d20 roll plus your attribute. Um, and then your skill proficiency. Well, if I put more points to proficiency, well, how does that affect it? Okay, if I put more points into it, if I put more points, where is it? Where is it? Trade attributes. Well, now we're immediately into trade attributes. Where's the modifier? Where's the modifier in this? Where is it? Languages coming in the beta. Okay, so we're just looking at the very, very early version of this. Uh, production, production value looks good for as early as it is. Right. Mastery, I guess. I guess it's mastery? Mastery represents how good you are at many different things. With no mastery, you gain no additional bonus to your d20 rolls while having the highest mastery. I guess that's the little boxes and pips that we saw. That was like a plus one to the roll with each one. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, look at the two like types of mastery. Yeah, I th yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. I think it's just one dice added. Yeah, because Sean, Sean was telling me, too, that this game is low numbers, where you don't have crazy high numbers in this game. Uh, you're not going to see somebody deal 59 damage in a single turn. Uh, mm -hmm. okay, this, oh, no, it's a, it's a plus two bonus for every box you click off. All right, so that's okay. what it is. It's not plus one, it's plus two. All right, I see it now. Let's go cap mastery. There's a little character cap for each one as to how high your skills can get. Oh, it does go up to 20. Okay. Looking at all this okay. stuff. Okay, novice, adept, expert, master. Okay, there's that table. Expertise feature. Uh, species skill mastery you can also increase each time they gain an expertise feature to a skill mastery. I'm assuming that's part of the class. Gaining skill mastery, you gain skill points at first level during character creation from your background. Uh, okay, but looks like they're putting more importance on background. Each skill point lets you pick whichever skill you want and increase its skill mastery level by one. Then as you level up, your class table will grant you additional skill points that you can spend further to increase your skill mastery level, additional class features, subclass features, ancestry traits, or talents. All right, this looks okay. This looks all. This all looks okay right now. Gaining knowledge skill mastery. When you spend a skill point on a knowledge skill, you gain a bonus skill points that you can now see. Okay, so it's pretty much the same thing. Lacking skill mastery, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you just don't get any bonuses if you don't have that. Same with the trades. Yeah, it's the exact same same thing with the trades. I'm assuming it's going to be the same with the languages. Yeah, it says like a. Zero, you don't know the language. One, you're limited. Two, you have like a first level grade school level of understanding with the language. 
And three, you sound like a gentleman in that language. I gotcha, mm. I gotcha. Become the most eloquent kobold in existence. <laughs> Just imagine that with the with the yip yak language. Right. Yeah, anyway. I, I think I like that the uh, notion that you can be familiar with the language without being a master at it is makes sense. Yeah, and in five e, it seemed like. If your intelligence was eight or lower, you just couldn't read. Uh, you could speak a language, but you couldn't read it, which was weird if you had a character that knew more than one language. Because how exactly are you learning languages in that case if you don't have a translator to go off of? That makes more sense in this system. All right, combat mastery. Okay, let's read this out. Combat mastery. Grants you a bonus to combat statistics such as your save DC, physical defense, mental defense, attack checks, and spell checks. Combat mastery is directly tied to your character's experience and is the only mastery that automatically grows over time as you level up. This allows combat mastery to provide a scaling. Uh, combat mastery formula is half of your character level rounded up. Where... Alright, it looks like this is your proficiency system and uh, what stuff you're able to learn. Where did I put on the sheet? I guess like there's space on the back of the sheet. Alright, okay. Gaining combat masteries. Gain during character creation. Okay, additional class features. And then weapons, shields, armor, spellcasting mastery. At first level, when you choose your class, you gain a list of what type of weapons, shields, and armor you are able to use. And if you cast spells or not. Additional class features, subclass features, ancestry traits or talents can give you access to any missing combat masteries you are wanting to pick up. Okay, attribute save mastery. During character creation, you select two attribute saves to gain combat mastery in. You add your combat mastery to all saves that you use to, for the attribute. Your attribute save bonus is directly listed next to the relative attribute on your character sheet. Okay, this looks okay. This, looks, this, this all looks okay. And then you, you have the general s spell save DC formula of 8 plus your prime off fire plus your combat mastery. All right, I see it now. Okay, this all makes sense. You have, it's like, how, it's like you have uh, two different proficiency bonuses in a way. Mm -hmm. you, see, uh, you see anything on this? You see anything on here you want to point out? Uh, I'm not sure what page you're on yet, so I might be getting a little bit far afield, but I've found uh, the tr list of trades. Uh, I, I was on page 14. Oh, you're way ahead of me. Uh, uh, well, where are you in the book? Uh, page 8. 8? Eight, 8, okay. Yeah, I found all, all different. Right. Uh, okay, well, let's go back to that one. Uh, all right. Uh, animal insights. So, okay, yeah, there's the trades, and there's the trades left beneath it. So artistry. Oh, you categorize the traits in different ones, too. All right. Well, that makes a little bit of sense. Somebody's messaging me on Discord. All right. Send that guy a message. Say, give me a minute. Okay. Recording. Yeah, I'm not adding that. I'll really put it in. <laughs> okay. Artistry. Uh, illustration. Using calligraphy tools. Agility for that. Well, I guess it makes sense. You gotta have good hands, good paintings. You, you can visualize a painting, but if you don't have the hand skill for it, you can't draw it. I guess that makes sense. And there's what kind of, what kind of medium you use. Musician tools. All right, they have the list of. Oh, pianos down here. All right, good. That was missing from my feet. Like, well, if I want to make a character that's a pianist, and we don't have five different kinds of horns anymore, we have just general horn. Okay. I can hear theater, uh, acting, comedy, dancing, singing, and juggling. You have a stand-up comedian bard. <laughs> All right. Um, subterfuge. You have the sky. A disguise trade. Okay, it goes off a of jolty or charisma. All right. Cryptography. Uh, it's the process of converting messages into secret or disguised words to protect them from being understood. Gotcha. Gaming sets. You can make a, I guess, a professional gambler in this game. And crafting, alchemy, blacksmithing, glass blowing, herbalism, jeweler, leatherworking, sculpting, tinkering, and weaving. And then you have your services down here, which 
I guess this, this is the more practical stuff like carpet, cartography, carpentry, cooking, brewing, masonry, and vehicles. And then they have not put the languages in yet. So I guess you could just pull these over from 5e if you want at this point in the game. Right, what page are you on now? Uh, I, we should be on the same page. I'm on page 11. All right, page 11. All right, looking at this with you. Yeah, it's got the whole skill mastery. Like, you see the table right there. Oh. Or it's skill mastery, and it's the same with your trades and your languages. Well, well, not, not, not the languages. Well, also, yeah, 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 the languages goes off a different table. It, it's similar, but it's a different table. Okay. I could... Look at all this novice, adept, expert, master, grandmaster, and skill mastery. All right, I got up to fourteen and then I stopped. And let's see, let me take a look at what's past fourteen. Oh, that's your check-in save system. I right? now now we can figure out how to do that. But let me let me wait for you first. Okay. Let's see what's okay, so uh... we talked about language mastery, but that is not what languages are available. Yeah, I'm ass I'm assuming it's just going to be a copy over from the five E list. They haven't made any lore for this game yet. I'm assuming it's a continuation off of D and D's lore, but which edition is what I'm thinking of. Um, granted, D and D's the way that story is written, it feels like a story that can just go on forever. But the way five E has been going now, the setting is becoming so saccharine and low stakes that it's beginning to make me wonder. You know, why does anyone feel the need to become a, an adventurer anymore when there's so many different solutions to the problems and there's so many NPCs that can get up and solve all these problems for you? I mean, what has Elminster been doing for the past 200 years besides sitting in Candlekeep and reading books? I mean, shouldn't this guy be able to, to go out and just solve all these problems by himself at this point? Mm -hmm. Because... Descent into Avernus, that was a problem that only you could solve. And it's because you were in the right place at the right time, on a time limit. That, that's why you had, to, you had to do a Descent into Avernus. It had to be you. But you have adventures like... Well, I guess Rhyme of the Frostmaiden also works because you're stuck in Frostmaiden. There's a wall of ice preventing you from leaving Icewind Dale. But stuff like... Tyranny of Dragons, or Tomb of Annihilation, or Storm King's Thunder. Anyone could have stepped up and solved that problem instead of you. Mm -hmm. and, and towards the end of Tyranny of Dragons, the, the Harpers and Zinterum both rise up and start fighting the cult. So it kind of begs the question, it's like, you, you still need us? I mean, we're here to fight Tiamat at the very end, but it feels like that's the only reason we're here. Yeah. And also that, again, somebody like Elminster would be better suited to fighting Tiamat. Exactly. Get, get Manshun to do it. Manshun has all the infinite clones of himself. Hmm. But Manshun would love to do it, get all of Tiamat's money afterwards. All right. uh, what page are you on? Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Checks and saves. I right. uh, well we we already know what a check and a save is. I don't think we need to read out what that is allowed. Alright. Um. Check modifier it goes off your, your prime modifier and your combat mastery for an attack check. Then attribute check is just your D twenty plus your attribute. Where it's plus two, plus four, plus six, however much you have proficiency in it. All right. Melee attacks. Alright, that makes sense. An unarmed strike. Ah, they point out uh, punch, elbow, kick, knee, and headbutt. I'm glad we have a little bit of Muay Thai in this game. It's a fun martial art to check out, too. You see people kicking down bamboo and banana trees with their shins. Part of your daily regiment. <laughs> range attacks. All right, normal range. The first number of, the, in parentheses, is a weapon's normal range. Okay, well, I guess we'll see that when we get to the weapons. You can make an attack against any target within this range. Long range, the second number in parentheses is a weapon's long range. You can make an attack at disadvantage against... Our, okay, so this is carried over from D&D 5e. Alright, gotcha. Alright, spell checks, DC 20, prime modifier, combat mastery. Sp spell check versus defense. If the spell deals damage, then the spell check is compared against the target's defense. 
to determine whether or not the attack hits the target. This type of spell check is called a spell attack. The type of damage dealt determines whether the spell check is made against the target's physical or mental defense. I'm assuming that's the difference between acid and psychic. If the result of the spell check is equal to or greater than the target's defense, then the attack hits, depending on the spell successes. If you've seen the target's defense by five or more, it can yield additional damage. See degrees of damage on page 25. Spell check versus spell DC. Okay, versus say, oh, okay, we already know how that works. Um, skill checks. Okay, we already know that. Trade checks. We just read a whole thing about trades. Special checks. All right, check contest. When a creature makes a check against the opponent creature's check, they are engaged in a contest. The creature with the highest check results in the winner. Okay, okay that's self-explanatory. And it gives a few examples down here. All right, passive skills. Sometimes a GM might not ask a PC to roll any dice. Instead, a GM would use a PC's average result for that kind of check. Every skill has a passive value, such as passive awareness, passive insight, passive athletics. The value of the passive skill is equal to 8 plus all bonuses normally applied to that check. So this is your passive perception, in a way. Have you ever been yeah. in a game where you've really used passive perception? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, never, although, uh, never in my life have I seen that been used, but continue your story. I was going to say, uh, but I don't see such a thing as passive athletics. I mean, That's, you're either I, doing something that requires a check or you don't. I guess by that point you're so physically fit you can just climb a ladder without tiring out. It decides how well you can climb a flat of stairs. <laughs> Uh, passive influence. Mm. Kind of thinking that passive intimidation. <laughs> How scary would you be? Oh, awareness ties in with the uh, perception. All right, got it, got it. Now that makes sense. And permanent okay. advantage and disadvantage. If you have an effect that grants you permanent advantage or disadvantage to a skill check, that's a, that's a thing. A warlord has heavy armor and has disadvantage on all skill checks they make, since this is a permanent. Then you would also do... Okay, alright. Huh. I thought that was a bigger deal than... Oh, okay, yeah, so it's... Oh, yeah, it's just... It, it's stuff I understand from D&D &D 5e. Okay, I'm looking at saves on page 18. Okay, I... Uh... Save. I think we already understand how this is going to work. Yeah, we've played... We've played 5e, we know how this works. All right, never, all right, moving on, uh, page 19, um, save categories. What is a dynamic attack save? Some game features um, both deal damage and impose an effect on the target. This is called a dynamic attack save. The provoking creature makes an attack check at the same time the target makes it save. The provoking creature's check is compared against the target's defense to determine if the target takes damage. And the target's save is compared against the provoking creature's save DC to determine if the target is subject to this effect. I guess it's what you would use against maneuvers. And that has a few advantages. Um, attack, hit, and save failure. The target takes damage and is subject to the effect. Attack, miss, and save failure. The target does not take damage but is subjected to the effect. Ah, okay. Okay, all right. That's unique that you can be hit by a sword but still knocked prone if you block it. Or the, I assume it's like the sheer force of the swing produces wind that knocks you over. Okay. When a creature has advantage oh. on a check or save, it rolls 2d12. Okay, we already know how this disadvantage works. Stacking a disadvantage. If a creature has multiple instances of advantage on a check or save, it has advantage X. Where the X represents the number of additional dice. Okay, so if you're... I'm assuming if you're a rogue who's using uh, the sneak attack, and you're flanking while a creature's within five feet of you already, I guess it's advantage plus one to your dice. Okay. And then disadvantage minus, where if you're being flanked and you're prone. I right, gotcha. And then combining advantage and disadvantage... If a creature has both advantage and disadvantage at the same time, the instance cancels out. I right, gotcha. Okay, variable. 
Gaining advantage and disadvantage on checks is made against each other is very common. Sometimes you might have to make a check against a group of creatures where you have advantage or disadvantage on check. Okay, so it's just like roll as it comes up. All right, gotcha. Multiple check penalties. Oh, okay, so you just can't roll the same check over and over. You start getting disadvantage on your... Oh, I see it, I see it. Okay. Oh, this is oh, no, it's not a plus one. It's a it's an additional dice that you roll with the advantage. All right, so if you have two sources of advantage, you roll three dice then. All right, okay, I, I was understanding it wrong. I was reading it wrong. All right. I get it now. Disadvantage from th from four different sources, you roll... F no, disadvantage three sources, you roll four dice and take the lowest result. Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> you just keep rolling until you end up laying on that one. Mm -hmm. right, critical, critical success. All right, critical success. Okay, well, do you do the table that I don't like? When a creature gets a t uh, gains critical success on attack roll or spell check that deals damage, the attack is considered a critical hit. If the attack is a check or a spell check that doesn't deal damage, the check automatically succeeds. Critical failure, that works the same. There is no table that causes crazy stuff to happen. Okay, good, good. Okay, I really don't like it when GMs implement that. Where, say, uh, you roll a critical failure, you lose your sword. And that just screws you over for the entire combat session after that happens. Yeah, something like that. Um, you so oh, what, you're, what, you're saying something? Yeah, it's, it's, fumble tables and the like just kind of encourage players... Or, or rather, punishes players for for rolling more dice. And given that's entirely right. based off a of chance. Yeah. I, I assume that you could also like fumble even after you duct tape your sword to your hand. <laughs> All right. I'm looking at page was page twenty one degrees of success. I guess it's uh yeah, it's here to show just how hard you succeed or you fail on your checks. I gotcha. I think this is pretty self-explanatory too. It's kind of like um, World of Darkness with its skill check table as to how well you're able to do something. I'm looking at this, alright. Defense! Alright, okay, defense. Creature has two types of defense. I'm looking at page 22. Alright. Physical defense represents the difficulty of hitting a creature with the physical energy attack, such as acid, bludgeoning, cold, fire, lightning, piercing, poison, slashing, and force. Okay. The character starts off with a physical defense of 8, which is similar to commoners. Combat mastery, the character then adds its combat mastery to account for how experienced it is at protecting itself from danger in combat. Unless a creature has mastery in heavy armor, it doesn't add its combat mastery to its D while wearing heavy armor. A character wearing light armor adds its agility score. A heavy armor character uses their might score. The armor bonus, a character wearing any armor or wielding a shield adds the armor bonus. Gotcha. Okay. And the typical formula is 8 plus agility score plus combat mastery, and then it changes with the um, with, um, heavy armor to be might. I gotcha. And then damage reduction, right? This is this is what Sean was telling me. Okay. Uh, reduces the damage of an attack check or spell check that targets the creature's physical defense. The amount is reduced is equal to the damage reduction value, minimum of zero. A heavy hit, five. Brutal hit, ten. Or critical hit, twenty. I, okay, so the, you remember the the drow poison from D&D &D 5e, right? Yeah. That if you fail that constitution save by five points or more, it incapacitates your character. It looks like this is happening here, where it, depending on how high you roll over, like the armor class, it deals a little bit more damage. All right, so right. that's what it is. All right, gotcha. All right. Brutal hit. It's going to be a nightmare to fight a, fight a giant in this game. <laughs> hmm. You, you remember just how much the stone giant rolls. Like, a, a normal roll for a stone giant is an 18. And they can roll up to 30. Yeah. Keep your distance, I guess. And mental defense is essentially the same thing. 
But it's psychic, sonic, and unholy damage. I guess they got rid of necrotic. And radiant damage is missing too. Alright, no more mm -hmm. radiant damage. Um, they finally added a sound-based uh, attack system. So yeah, because I, I was thinking like sonic abilities. It's always been forced in my games, but yeah, it makes sense that sonic. And it's the same thing, but it's your charisma score. It's it's eight plus your combat mastery plus your charisma score plus your intelligence score. All right, so some mind altering stuff like like distant whispers takes um. It's hard for you to be affected by that now. Because now you got uh, I'm assuming your mental defense is going to be stacked no matter what. It's going to be. Uh... I assume it's going to be like a like a base of like around fourteen on average with your characters. To, like unless you completely dump charisma and intelligence. All right, health mm -hmm. points. I look at page twenty three. Health points. Okay, well I'm, I, I think we already understand how that works. At first level, it is 4 plus your character level times 2 plus might plus agility. And then for every... And then you've got your modifiers depending on what ancestry you are. And then your health point formula. It continues on to 4 plus your two, 2 times your player character level. Might, agility, and your possible class or ancestry bonus upgrade is the final formula. And then it says bloodied, well bloodied, death door, to, so your GM can tell you how much damage you're dealing against enemies if you don't have visible health health bars in roll 20. Death's door. When a PC is reduced to zero hit points or more, it suffers the following. It immediately gets exhaustion one. Action point reduction becomes one. Death save at the end of its turn. Uh, creature takes one true damage. Okay, so there's a true damage system. Where it falls in consciousness, it resorts to one DC. So looking at this true damage thing, it's I guess that's an explanation as to how many times you can be attacked while prone. So you remember with uh with with like dungeon masters, if you're rolling death saves and you're down, if a creature attacks you while that's going on, that's an automatic death save, or they just automatically kill you. I guess with this ability yeah. now. They have to roll the damage roll, die with it. And if the true damage you take overlaps your hit point maximum, that kills you. I see it now. Okay. I like that a little bit better. Right, making death saves, stabilized, you need a DC 10 mess and check. Alright, continuous damage, We're bleeding and burning, do not affect your health points while on damage. Okay, so you're not just, like, laying down, bleeding, or on, on fire, and then it just tears away your health. All right, good. I, I can see how that could get annoying from a player perspective. And then Death Store after combat. When combat ends, any creature on Death Store must immediately make a death save. They repeat the save every 12 seconds until they become stabilized. All right. So I guess you're bleeding out after you take that much damage. And then the creature takes one true damage and fails unconscious. If they fail this until they become stabilized, so you just can't continue on low health points. So somebody has to like has to bandage or staple your wounds closed. All right. Okay, I got that. Um, damage. Um. Well, part of me wonders if we should look at damage because I'm looking at this automatically. I think I already understand what this is. Yeah, True it might damage. be. What? I was saying it might be beneficial to look at how to to make a character. Right, what kind of numbers are we looking at? All right, damage, damage reduction, combat resources, action points. What was oh man, what is this? Action points which you can spend in combat. Oh, okay, so that's like your your action economy. That's what that is. Okay, that's what they're calling it. All right, I get it. Mana points, stamina points. I told you what those are already because Shaman told me about that. Offensive actions, disarm, grapple, shove, tackle, disengage, dodge, hide, your standard fare, the help action, uh, to use the help die. Oh, help, using the help action just gives you a d8 to a check then. Okay, so it's like a, it's like a park inspiration dice in a sense. But how far away does the enemy need to be? Uh, apparently it's just until they do their next thing. Okay, so there is no distance limit. Well, I I get I think the creature has to be standing next to you, but it's not like 
The help action is stupid when it comes to melee because you have to help a creature who's attacking a creature that's also within five feet of it. Okay, so so it's more like the like the mastermind rogue in a way, where you can just tell the creature like I'm giving you advantage on attacking a creature that I designate, and I just need to be staying next to you. And okay, so this looks fine. This all looks fine. Right. Object interaction, spell, skill, conceal, analyze, intimidate, investigate. Okay, we we all know what this is. We know what this is. All right, held actions are a thing. Thank you for playing the rules for that. Come to think of it, is held actions are those brought up in the D and D five E book? I'm pretty sure they are. Oh, hold on, man. Here's here's something. Here's something. Uh, spell duel. I, I'm cut. okay. Uh, Sean told me about this. Okay, so what happens? You declare a spell duel and spend two AP or one more mana point to challenge a creature with a spell of your own. So every creature has um counter spell in this game. And how it's done is, um, I was explained to this as, say, a creature is shooting a ray of frost. You can counter that with your own ray of frost, and you have, like, a little Harry Potter beam clash. Like, Dragon Ball Z beam clash. And you have to, like, outroll the other person making the spell. And if you outroll them, you stop the spell. If you lose that roll, you, you take damage. Okay. Uh, and there's a wild magic table in this game. Where ah oh, boo, it's only a D twenty. Where's the D one hundred? Ah, I guess we need to finish the game first, and then we'll get them a hundred points. All right, maneuvers. Yeah. Um, should we come? Should we go back to maneuvers later? Uh, sure. All right, maneuvers, techniques. Skipping ahead, skipping ahead. Spell casting, mana points. Okay, we've, uh, I've already got an idea of what these are. Schools of Magic. Oh, man, this caught my eye. They added, they added two of these. Abjuration, Astronomy, Chronomancy, Conjuration, Divination, Enchantment, Destruction, Illusion, Necromancy, Restoration, and Transmutation. Ah, okay. Alright, well, I was going to say the wizard has been getting pretty stale lately. Given that everything was made in the player handbook, and then everything that comes out after that is just the same kind of subclass, but retooled in a slightly different way. Because the Chronomancy Wizard is just the Divination Wizard, but Divination acts just a little differently. Okay. Uh, there's mechanics in here for drowning, for vision. I think we already know how some of this stuff works. True Sight, we know how that works. Creatures in combat, okay, we know how this works. Uh, light weapons, heavy weapons. There's a weapon table. I found it on uh, page 58. Oh, you're way ahead of me. Yeah, yeah but I've been scrolling through this trying to find uh, the character creation. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, sickle, hand axe, battle axe. Yeah, you look at these damage values. The great axe deals four damage. That was a D12 plus your strength modifier in the last one. And uh, 5e. You can throw the sickle. All right, good. Uh, yeah, because Sean was telling me this is a very low number game. I think it's high. I think 100 hit points is considered to be massive for our creatures in this game. Yeah. Right. Okay. Chained weapons. Ah, okay. I was wondering if we could have a nunchuck monk, and now we can. Okay. All right. Picks, spears, staffs, swords, fists. Oh, you can finally have a knuckle weapon. Good. They finally added this in. We've been waiting for D&D 5e to do this, and they just never did. Whips. Special all right, special weapons. All right. Rapier, Spite Hammer, Morning Star, and Great Star. All right. Uh, let's see. Ranged weapons, bows, crossbows, and special. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We've seen this before. All right. Magic weapons, where you get the little plus one, plus two, plus three. Same with your armor. Same with attribute, okay, attribute requirements. Okay, scroll, scroll, scroll. Conditions. Okay, I'm looking at this. It pretty much is the same as D&D 5e on page 63. Okay, it's going past that. Resting. Oh, okay, we'll come back to you in a minute. Where's the character creation? Game Master's Guide. Okay, we'll get to it later. All right, character creation. I, I found it. Page 69. Okay. Character creation outline. 
During your player character creation, you will get to customize your PC in the following ways at level 1. Choosing your starting attributes, choosing your save mastery, spending points on skills, trades, and languages, choosing an ancestry, background, and class. Okay, categories for customization. Talents. Talents are uh, four, four categories for your talents. Ancestry, class, multi-class, and general. Gotcha. Which are, I'm assuming those are like your feats. How to create a character. All right, start attributes. Okay, the standard array is three, one, zero, and minus one for your modifiers. Oh yeah, it's doing the it's doing the Pathfinder third edition yet to be released school of um, game design, where there's no score, it's just the modifier. All right, right. I see. I see. I like that, and I don't like that at the same time. I think I like it more than I don't like it. And then. And then an additional plus one that floats that you can just put wherever. So you can have a starting prime modifier of four in this game at level one. It's pretty good. And then you can just use that plus one that cancel out that minus one. All right, roll method. Yeah. If you if you want to roll for stats, it's a D4 minus two. And you do that four times. And then you plus two uh, a stat of your choice. Well, then you just have twos and everything, right? Or you can have a minus two for a stat. No, a minus one for a stat. Yeah. I don't think you want to roll in this game. Uh, and then point by, you have a zero in all of your attributes, and then you get four points to put wherever you want. I think the standard array is the way to go with this character creation. Yeah, the rolling, I mean, you could get twos across the board and, and be a... Uh... Joe, Joe Stratelli. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if your dice are, are, are mean to you, you could get zeros across the board. You're just going with minus one, and you can't do anything with that. I mean, you get that plus two, but behold, that's just going to give you a one modifier. I guess if you're playing a character who's like, kind of like a loser that becomes a hero, I guess you want to use that instead. Yeah. And and there's a point by method, but at the same time, it looks like the beefiest character you can create is the standard array. All right. Uh, prime modifier, we already went over that. Uh, okay, choosing your save mastery. You get to choose two attributes to gain save mastery at level one. Choose two of the four attributes, and then you get a little bonus, it looks like. You're now able to use your combat mastery to those saves. Okay, got it. So that's your that's your save proficiency from 5e carried over into this game. I thought it would be only one, but no, it's two in this game. It looks strong to me. Ah, la, la, leave it, leave it. Let's play it, it'll be strong. Right, choosing your ancestry. Okay, they're using the space system here, right? Gone or defeat system. Right, you movement speed of four spaces. Your size is medium across the board. Ancestry traits. Ah, oh, there's no ancestry traits. Well, who do we play as then? What are the races? There's no yeah, races. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And if you, uh, if you uh, pick a a halfling, for example, would you be a small character? I guess uh, the halflings wear the 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 Ron DeSantis shoe. That gives them the, the four inches they need to reach medium size. <laughs> okay. Uh, ah, this shit's missing. I guess you just gotta play a human then. Ah, uh, the elves and the dwarves and the gnomes. And the Githyanki. Ah, nuts, it's missing. Okay, all right, choosing your background, okay. You get five skill points to spend on skills. You must not go over the skill cap mastery for level one. All right, three trades and a language. And the background trait, which is just to be really, and the backgrounds are not here, which would also just decide your starting gold. All right, carrying on, choosing your class. All right, well, what are the classes? Okay, you have the health point system, 
Okay, we've already seen this before. I think you could like show that in just like isolation for like to your players. Just take, take a little screenshot of that and then post it somewhere. Here, what am I looking at? Player progression. We all go off the same table. All right, level one, two, three, four. Okay, le levels one to twenty. Your skip mastery increases with each one. Get a little attribute point bonus, a skill point bonus, a trade bonus, and then a feature, talent, or trait. You see this table? It's on page 71. Yeah. Right, so looking at that. Uh, this, this is okay. This is all okay. I right, uh, Leveling up. When the PC levels up, their updates... Okay, so it says... Uh, uh, so it says what was on the table, but in word form. I right, gotcha. And max level 10 and prestige levels. The max level for each character class in DC20 is level 10. But there is a prestige path that unlocks in level 11. Oh, okay, so it's also doing the Pathfinder thing great if one multi-classes. Everyone's a hyper class. Well, at the same time, when have you seen a game go past level 10? Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple. Like our, our Out of the Abyss game, we finished off at level 15, I think. Yeah, level 15. And... I think that's the exception, not the norm, because I'm struggling. I'm struggling to think of campaigns that go past ten anymore. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go to Saltmarsh game where we're fifteenth level, uh, this, this and is... a homebrew campaign where our characters are twentieth level. I'm about to hit twentieth level too. I'm running Dungeon of the Mad Mage on Wednesdays. That's a fun game, and we're le we're reaching level nine, where the best strategy I have for fighting players is just throwing a ton of enemies at them. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I can really make high-level combat difficult anymore. Alright. Talents. I'm looking at this. Talents, page 73. Okay, general talents. Okay, general talents will increase. Okay. It says, wait for the alpha updates to come out. Okay, you gain a plus one attribute point. And then you gain plus two for skills. Class talent, multi-class and talent, multi-class talent. It looks like this hasn't finished yet. No, it that doesn't. Was, it's not done yet. Okay, all right, classes, classes, all right, what are the classes? Okay, <clears throat> we have the Barbarian Fighter Warlord. I'm assuming that's like the champion from uh, Pathfinder carried over into here. Rogue, Ranger, Monk... And let's see, spellcasters, wizard, sorcerer. Hey, the scion is back. Um, cleric, druid, and bard. And then a hybrid of the paladin and the warlock. You're you're going to hybrid with the warlock. All right. I'm noticing there's no artificer on this. On this. Well, not that not that I was gonna play one anyway because I fucking hate the artificer. Okay. And there is no druid, bard, warlock, or cursed. What's a cursed? What's the curse going to be? Okay, so they're not finished yet. Okay, so so they're not in this game yet. Okay. At martial classes. That multi-class into spellcasting. I think this is kind of self-explanatory. We already figured out how to do that with 5e. Alright. Multi-classing, spellcasting table. Wait, you see there's a little table on 74. Where it's like spellcaster features taken, mana points gained, cantrips learned, spells learned. Just looking at that. Looks like the features taken. All right, well, I guess that makes sense if you were trying to multi class and you can't really figure that out. And it's also the vice versa with the martial class. You see, like, the stamina gained is like low for your martial um, maneuvers. It's only a plus one for every feature level you gain. And multi classing exceptions. Divine damage. The first time you gain the feature that says divine damage, you must choose holy or unholy. Well, I guess the unholy gets swapped around in that case to become a, a holy damage. So I get, I guess, just reading damage in this game after all. All right, um, except for it's holy instead of radiant. Yeah. And then prestige characters, prestige level learning, right? Character features. There's your little prestige chart for every level you want to go over. So if you just want to go full fighter, there you go. At prestige paths. I'm looking at level page page seventy six. Uh, so that's what your eleventh and eleventh through twentieth level in that class looks like. Attribute mod plus seven. Ooh, very nice. Let's see, um, 
Where did prestige leveling come from? I feel like Call of Duty like popularized that term. Which term, uh, sorry? Prestige leveling. Oh, uh, um... Yeah, that was... Uh, I think second edition D&D had introduced prestige, prestige classes. Oh, did? I, I, I felt like I was talking about my ass with that one. <laughs> All right. Um, it looks like there's only up to level two for every each one of the classes in here. I'm looking at their. I'm looking at the barbarian on level. Um, no, I keep the same level. Page seventy eight. All right. So the barbarian. Okay, church worker. Okay, so it's, it's barbarian. We know how this works. All right. Is there any class in here that you won't look at in particular? Uh, they didn't offer anything that was different from 5e, did they? It's pretty much the same, but the Scion is new. Which word that appeared in 2e okay. and then disappeared off the face of the planet. Let's read what the wizard does. All right, the wizard. Okay. I'm looking at page 97. All right, the wizard learns spell schools to so control them. All right, so yeah, the same basic concept of the wizard. Right, starting equipment is one light weapon, one set of novice light armor, uh, a wizard in armor, or the X or Y hacks which haven't been placed into the game yet. Okay, all right, level one class features. All right, combat mastery, light weapons, light armor, and spell casting. When you learn a new spell, you can choose any spell on the arcane spell list. Oh, spell lists are back. All right, good. Um, let's see, the can trips. Okay, once again, let's remind us that it's an alpha. Okay, mana points. Mana limit break. Once per combat, when you spend MP, you can increase your mana spend limit by one. Okay, so you just always have like a little bit more um, mana points. You get like one mana point back or an extra for every combat you go into. Okay, so you're never just the wizard who spent all of his spells and is just screwed for however long until you get a long rest again. I hate the wizard because of that. At the minute you cast all of your spells, you just can't do anything but cast cantrips. Yeah. Right, people complain about the um, a warlock being Eldritch Blast, the, the class. Well, I say that too about the wizard, because the minute your spell slots are gone, you're just casting Firebolt forever, and that's all you get to do until you long rest. And if that game is... If that game is Dungeon of the Mad Mage, that's going to last for s multiple floors. Because by that point, you start getting cursed in that dungeon. Or what's another really long Tomb of Annihilation, that one too. Alright. So it's good it's good that it's in here. Alright, that that's a good idea. Arcane Sigil, you can spend one action point and one mana point to create a one space diameter arcane sigil on the ground beneath you that lasts for one minute. Choose one spell school or one spell tag. When you create the arcane sigil, that arcane sigil radiates the magic chosen type. While a creature is within the area of your arcane sigil, it has advantage on spell checks to cast or produce the effects of that spell within chosen spell. Okay, so it gives you a little advantage on casting spells as long as you stay still within that circle. How long does that circle last? I'm assuming that until that's um, that's finished, this will just be indefinite. You can just walk into another man's sigil that he made five days ago and start using fire spells in that sigil. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Also here, and then the wizard, wizard class. All right. So I'm looking at here. It looks like they finished the table, but they didn't put it in text form. There's just supposed to be a class feature that you get at level five, and yet the class feature just isn't down here. Yeah. So, yeah. So they don't goes finished. Up, it only goes up to two. You ready for a level two, like a two level game in, in this? Speaking of this too. Uh -huh. Speaking of it, the uh, the subclass features are also missing. So you, can um, really all, you you really do only go to level two. Yeah, subclasses are also missing. All right. Um, what's also on here? Spellbook flavor. You have a spellbook containing all of your spells. Okay, so yeah, the same thing for five e. Inscribing a spell into your spellbook requires five gold and one hour. Oh, I hate that. I hate the one hour uh, writing time. Why can't I just take a spell scroll 
and then staple it to the inside of my spellbook, and behold, I now have that spell in my spellbook. Uh, I guess you could. You'd have a janky-looking spellbook, but... It's like a spell folder in that case. You, that, you play as the wizard that walks around with a manila envelope and just pulls out spreadsheets of spells. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the corporate wizard, I gotta think of character for that now. And then level two, okay, arcane points. You gain two arcane points. Okay, this is new. Which you can spend in the following ways when you use your arcane sigil feature. You can spend one or more points to add an equal number of tags or abilities while you're within your arcane sigil. You can spend arcana points or enhancement spells for spells that include your arcane sigils as an ASBL tag. When you gain the, an additional two arcane points each time, okay, you gain regain all these points on long rest, and then you get a talent. Okay, let's look at a martial class too. I think that that, that that's all there is on the wizard. Let's look at. Yeah. Um, do you want to do the monk or the ranger? Ah, uh, I was thinking the warlord is right there. All right, well, warlord. Right, let's look at the warlord. All right, war warlord. Okay. The commanders of the battlefield, inspiringly... Okay, so this is the champion. Okay, gotcha. Okay, two of the following... What, uh, light weapons, heavy weapons, or shields. Um, I guess I can pick two shields as my equipment with the Warlord. <laughs> Just walk around like that. <laughs> okay, uh, one ranged weapon with 20 ammo, or three throwing weapons. Be the right police officer with that build. Uh, one set of novice light armor, or novice heavy armor... And the adventure packs coming soon. Okay, Warlord level one. All right, combat masteries, all weapons, all armor, and all shields. Okay, you gain access to maneuvers and weapon passives. You know a number of techniques as shown in the techniques known column. Well, how many techniques do you know? One, two. Okay, okay. So you know one because it only goes up to level two. Um, stamina points. You have a number of stamina points, and it's shown in the table where it goes up to two. Okay, for, you gain one stamina point every time you grant an ally a help die. Okay, so... Ah, oh, I like that. You remember the Banneret fighter and how it sucks in 5e? Uh, not really. I'm not familiar with that subclass. Well, it's because you never see anyone play as it because it's horrible. It's supposed mm. to be doing what the Warlord is doing. All right, so that makes sense. That it, this rewards you for staying behind or in front of your other party members. And then every time you forego your action to use the help action, it gives them um, it gives them the help action, and it gives you a stamina point for doing that. I, I like yeah. that. I like that. That's, that's smart. Okay. Uh, inspiring, inspiring presence. When you spend stamina points while in combat, you can restore an amount of HP equal to the SP spent. Choose any allies within five spaces of you and divide the HP among them. A creature must be able to see or hear you to benefit from this feature. Right, good. Right, really good. This looks good. This looks like a really good class right off the bat. Right, Commander's mm -hmm. Call. You can spend an action point and stamina point to command one willing creature they can see within five spaces of you to take one of the following actions, reaction, following actions as reaction for free. The creature can make it an attack action check, move, or dodge. Okay, this is really good. This is really good right off the bat. I can see myself using this for... Alright, so I, I can only wait to see what you're going to do with subclasses for this one. Okay, combat leader. Your experience as a leader on the battlefield at the start of combat, you, grant, you can freely grant one creature of your choice to help die. You're making an entire class based around the help action. That's cool. Right, Herald Banner. You have a Herald Banner that is made from a 10-foot... <laughs> this is the Banneret. <laughs> that's made from a 10-foot pole attached with a 2-by-4-foot flag. The banner bears the emblem of a group, guild, faction, kingdom, or other affiliated group. You can spend one action point to plant the banner uh, on the ground with one space. Well, what does it do? A uh, display banner. Okay. You must display the banner for a creature to benefit from its presence. Okay, you're able to do this to other... Rel you you rally allies with this. Okay, while your banner is on display, you can spend one action point to take the help action as an action or a reaction to aid a creature um, with an attack action. The creature must be within five spaces of the banner. Ah, oh, okay. 
And then replacing the banner, you need to spend five gold to make a new one. Okay, good. All right, this is, this is really smart. This is a smart class. Keep in mind, you think of this. Uh, I think it's neat. Uh, okay. I want I'd like to see how they stack up against a fighter in, in actual melee to melee combat. Well, in that case, should we read what the fighter is then? Sure. All right, fighter, 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 where are you? Page 81. Okay, so it's the fighter. We know what the fighter is by this point. Okay, starting equipment. Three light weapons, heavy weapons, or shield. Three shields. <laughs> One ranged weapon with 20 ammo or three throwing weapons. Novice armor, heavy armor, a pack. Okay. You're proficient in all weapons, armors, and shields. You gain access to all maneuvers and passive weapons. Ooh. You learn a number of techniques that's shown on the table where it's one for now. Stamina points, it's one and two. Fighter stamina, you regain one stamina point when you perform a maneuver in combat. You don't regain SP if the maneuver was performed as part of a technique. Okay, so the fighter can kick some ass with this. Okay. And then fighting style. Right, you see these fighting styles. Archery, close quarter shooter. Okay, we finally have an answer to when a creature gets into close combat with you if you're an archer build. Right, this is why you never see an archer fighters because of that. Okay, defense, dueling, great weapon, heavy armor, light armor, shield defender, throne weapon, and two weapons fighting. Where's the unarmed fighter, though? Can we get that in the, uh, in the final release? So can Probably just have it's a, uh, a monk. Because you know what's a character I've wanted to build in 5e, but I can't because it's just not viable? Like a Captain America type fighter, where it's just the shield in your bare fist and that's all you're using to fight. Hmm. Huh. I think, like, the way he fights, like, like Captain America as a character is, like, kind of boring and dead ass honesty, but the way he fights is the most interesting part of his character. All right. Adaptive tactics. The longer you spend in combat... Okay, let me read that again. The longer you spend in combat, the better you begin to understand your enemy and how to exploit their weaknesses. You gain the following benefits for every round you spend engaged in combat. Two turns, two rounds, you have advantage on martial checks. Three, you have advantage on physical checks. Four, you have advantage on physical saves. And five, you have advantage on death saves. So the longer combat goes on for, the more damage the fighter can do. Mm -hmm. and your level 2 ability action search, well action search is back second wind is back and okay well it looks like the fighter can just steamroll combat <laughs> okay you, you want to talk about a DPS build there you go combine that with the warlord mm -hmm. it's going to deal a ton of damage very quickly Holy crap of the fighter. You managed to make the fighter stronger in this game. Just, just from that one ability. Okay, and okay, this, the pre-made spell list. Should we go through the spell list? Uh, we could glance at it. Where, what page are we on now? I'm, I'm flipping through it. It starts at, where, where does it start? Um, page, eight, page 99. Ah, right, good, okay. the Carolyn... They categorize these spells by element. All right, so if you want to be a full fire mage, you now have a page for that. I'm yet to tell whether or not Flame Blade is going to be useful or not. Flame Blade in um in five E is terrible, <laughs> absolutely horrible. And grease is in here. All right, so it looks like you can set the grease from grease on fire. Yeah, okay. it is flammable. Because yeah, uh, it doesn't say you can do that in 5e, but now it says it explicitly here. You can set the grease on fire. Okay. All right. All right. I don't think there's spell levels anymore. I don't think there is either. I think I think it's cantrip and then just level, like level spell in quotation marks. Okay. Then look at here. Look at here. Destruction magic of burning flames. It's burning flames, burning hands. It is burning hands. All right. Why did you combine Ice and Illusion? It's That's very puzzling. a darn good question. I guess I've seen like enough... I guess I like think of like Haku from Naruto, where Haku had the whole Ice Mirror gimmick. 
with the way they fought. I guess that's why it's combined. Strange. Lightning and teleportation have been combined. Which is I, okay. I don't see how that combines at all. <laughs> uh, psychic and enchantment. Well, that works. Um, command is back. One of the strongest first level spells is back. Holy and Restoration. Okay, special... Sorcerer class feature. Okay, so there's your whole sorcery point system. And your cleric gets the unique spells. Um, close wounds instead of cure wounds. And Augury. Right, Augury's back. Oh, oh, that's the end of the page. Um, we, it stops on 109. Huh. Uh, okay. All right, so that's what we have. Right, looking at this. Um, should we keep looking at this, or should we go to the monster manual? Uh, well, what? How many pages are there left here? Right. I've, we've looked at the book, but we've, we've skipped a few things. Uh, we skipped over what uh, the rest system does. Right, where's the rest? Okay. Right, the rest system. All right, I gotta find out what patient was again. Character creation, game master's guide. There's a lot of stuff missing in this book, but yeah, it's still in its alpha stage. It's, uh, so, so we're looking at the proof of concept at the moment. I guess you could call this. I found it. I found it. Okay, okay, I found it. I found it. Page 65. Okay. So resting. You have a number, you have a number of rest points equal to your character. Si there we go. Thank you. Okay, I'm getting sick to death of D&D games for after every combat your party asks for a short rest. Thank you for putting it in the game. Okay. Whew. All right, no activity, sleeping, meditation, and contemplating while idle. All right, you can do All right, light activity, strenuous activity, dangerous activity, All right, quick rest. A period of no activity or light activity is at least 10 minutes long. You can spend one or more rest points up to your maximum at the end of a quick rest. When you do so, you regain HP equal to your might plus two. Short rest, at any point of a short rest, you can rest or regain HP. The same, okay, short features, regain, expand uses on a short rest. And then long rest is the full restoration. And then exhaustion can only be recovered from a short or long rest. Okay. All right. And if you're doing light activity, it needs to be a DC 10 save. And it details what you explicitly can and can't do. While doing the short and long rest. Uh, okay, and then a full rest is a 24 hour period of, of um, anything up to what is considered dangerous activity. Okay, thank you for doing this. I like this system. Okay. All right. Although I did then, see a term that con concerns me, which is half long rest. I yeah. mean, why not just have a, a short rest? I guess, I guess that would be a short rest in that case. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's what it says. So Yeah, I'm assuming it's like a diction thing. Yeah, if, you're, if your rest is interrupted, so that's when you would use a half-long rest, I guess. Uh, okay, oh, good. All right. So when your GM interrupts your long rest, you, you can pull that on them saying we still get some benefits. Yeah. Uh, all right. What else did we skip over in here that's worth checking out that's not self-explanatory? Um, there's mechanics in here for drowning. Right, that's good. Um, look at this. Uh, peace. I should check. I think we should read, um, initiative. Okay. Right. I have found it on page 46, and it goes into 40, 47. Okay. Okay, willing for initiative. The moments leading up to combat greatly affect initiative. This window of time establishes the location for each creature, what they're doing, and what much triggers the combat. Rolling initiative is when players make initiative checks, determine their overall order of the participants in combat. The PC is are trying to beat the initiative DC. There's a difficulty class for the initiative. The actions taken by okay, I'm on 47. The action is taken for a for the PC. Do a few modifiers. Okay, examples. Okay, the, the rogue was caught pickpocketing. The ranger figuring something out about animal. Okay, but where's the check? Okay, what do you roll? 
Initiative help action. Okay, I guess you can forego your own initiative check to give somebody a D8 bonus on theirs. Okay. Yeah. So looking at this, it looks like there's a difficulty class for the initiative. And then you have to roll to beat that initiative. And then, like, depending on how high or how low you rolled above that number, decides, like, a negative, like, initiative value. Is that what I'm looking at? Is that what this is? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I think it is. I think it is. I think it is. I think it is that, like, what you were doing, like, gives you, like, few, a few modifiers or that, that, that add or subtract to your initiative. And then you have to, like, low under a set benchmark that decides what order you're going to roll in. Right, initiative order. The order is based on which each participant gain takes return in combat. This is established by taking the highest initiative check of the PCs and comparing it against the initiative DC. Which is... I don't think that is fully written yet. Encounter DC. Okay, I see. Easy DC, 5 or lower. Hard DC, 5 or higher. And then it is the D20 subtracted from that. Okay, I think that's a little extraneous. Like you, I think you just roll D20 plus awareness. I think it would make more sense if you just roll D20 plus your awareness. Yeah. Yeah, that I, would I think, be better. Yeah, I think, I think that makes a little bit more sense. Rather than just like playing with negatives or anything like that. Okay. I think that may, like, maybe this would be like more useful for like... Um, Surprise rounds, maybe. If you're if you're trying to get a turn off beforehand, I guess you could they'll, they'll work for only one turn. But I think like D twenty plus your brainness would be better. I, I I think I'm done looking at this. Uh, is there anything in here that you want to look at? No, I think I'm good. Nope. All right, let's check out the monster manual. Okay. Or the monster guide. That monster guide. Okay, look at this. Monster versus PC. Okay. Ah, you have a little um, difficulty table. Right, so the highest hit points you should probably be fighting at level 1 is 15 hit points. Okay, got it. You thought out the whole difficulty. But the question stands, will it be um, like 5e where the, you have a challenge rating and then the challenge rating just doesn't make sense? You gotta math this one out. You gotta do a lot of playtesting for this one. I see, I see. I see. So basic information to monsters. Monsters. They don't have any pre-written monsters yet. So uh, it's more like, yeah. It's more rules as to how to build a monster then. And there's up to three uh, levels of monster difficulty. Just looking at all of this. Um... Monster Cheat Sheet, uh, they have a few attack actions they can do. They have a cleave value. Apply one attack check per turn to two adjacent turn. Oh no! Monsters can now attack two people at the same turn again. Ah uh, crap, that was, that was the uh, mechanic from 3rd th edition that was super dangerous. Well, combat just got a lot deadlier. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at that on page 3. Okay, and then yeah, regeneration I... abilities again. Resistance and shielded. All right. Well, looks like this game isn't going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be. Looking at all of this. It saves. Monster passive effects. Game master tips. This is more rules on how to build a monster than anything else. Okay. So if I want to yeah. build drow, orcs, and kobolds, I could use this. But if I want to make a pit fiend, I can't. Have you guys found a Pit Fiend at level 2? It's possible in the second edition. <laughs> you remember that time in um, in uh, Theros that I put a DC 15 monster in front of you guys at level 4 and you won? Uh, what was that monster? It was the big lion guy. Uh, the black lion. Oh yeah. And you, yeah. and you fought him in the castle. And just like by playing smart and exploiting, exploiting the mechanics you won that fight. Hmm. All right, look at this. Boss point. Wait, hold on, man. What is this? Page five. Creatures can have a number of boss points, one to three, and they can spend them on some things listed below. 
such as choosing to succeed on a save that they failed and reducing the damage they just took by half. Legendary Resistance is back. This is Legendary Resistance under our new name. And specifically for boss monsters. They hit by fire damage, you take no damage. Okay, so it looks like there's rules on this. Along with the legendary action. No, hold on, there's legendary actions and boss points. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, some enemies just got a lot harder to fight. Yeah. Recharge. Recharge the beginning of combat. Oh, no. Legendary actions never end. Well, this. Well, this could be absolutely crazy. All right, put, put that away. And um, there's a little adventure module here. The Hunted. How many pages are there of this? I'm just going to flip through this. Uh, okay, so what looks like? Um, moving yourself. All right, adventure challenges. Rival group. Okay, some example dialogue. Leaving the city. Yeah, it gives a few like pre-written things. How to make like NPC sheets. Wild monster attack. All right, so it looks like you and another adventuring group get in an argument. And then, um... And then you fight some monsters, and then that's pretty much it, and it takes you up to level 2. And then right before you become level 3, it just stops. All right. Uh, wow, man, it looks like... It looks like DC 20's got some more books to be released. Uh, bonus levels, perks volume. Um, Arctic Survival Guide, and... Um, Alcander's Almanac of All Things. Uh, some books just yet to be released. There's a Discord link. All right, wonderful. Well, I guess they want to give this to that. Hold on, man, can I... Can I just open that Discord and just join the Discord? I think I can. Probably. Yeah, I, th I think you might want to change that around to, like, every person who pays for this or is a Patreon subscriber gets that link. Because that's going to leave you open to raids. Uh, maybe the reason why I haven't made a Discord server for us yet is because, you know, the prospect of being raided by some guy who doesn't like our channel. Oh, okay. I think I've got a verif verification system in mind, but I'm still working out the finer details because I don't know how to Discord mod all that well. I've done it before and I didn't do a very good job at it, so I'm figuring it out again. Alright, I, th I think we've seen all the risks of C. Yeah, so there's still a, a lot of gaps in in the system. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, this is this is still at like the very early alpha, so I'm excited to see what the beta looks like. Because looking at what we've got, it looks good. It it looks like a good RPG system. Going off the D20s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about this? Um, I like that they have skill levels. Like that's something that I felt in Five E was missing is, you know, you can you can learn the skill and you can have expertise in the skill, but there's not really a, a like, spectrum. Like further growth in the skill, like you just gain proficiency in performance, and you just stay at that level of performance forever. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So it looks like you compartmentalized and expanded the game at the same time. It it's weird. Am I? Am I losing my mind where it looks like they combined D&D &D and Pathfinder with World of Darkness with some of these systems? They want the skill levels and the, like the damage resistance, or it's kind of like a soak dice. Um, yeah, I can see what you mean a little bit. Yeah, I'm looking at this. Well, this looks, this looks exciting. Um, whether or not we're going to get to test this out, I'm going to see... Well, we have to finish the game first. But we have to finish either Werewolf or we just started Dark Heresy. Okay, so we gotta finish one of those two first, and then we can get to trying this out. Uh, given the Werewolf game, we are reaching a natural conclusion to that game faster than we are going to reach Dark Heresy. So, I suppose when we finish Werewolf, we will move to this next. Okay, you're thinking of using DC-20 for... Yeah, testing it out, seeing how it goes. I, I, I think it would be beneficial to the developers if they saw people play the game and then record it, and it can play back as, like, whether or not we misunderstood something or if something needs to be rebalanced. 
and we're a group of around five players, so yeah, that's plenty of stuff to test out. The The issue is trying to limit myself to a game that's only going to last two levels. Yeah. That's a, that's a good time to pull out the old um, Dragon Heist page again and figure out how to run a, a smaller city-based campaign. I mean, that could work. But that would give us some longevity, too, because that game would be mostly roleplay. Mm -hmm. It's like a like like a like a shorter, more personalized Dragon High story is what I'm thinking of. They can run with this, or like the first half of Lost Mind of Fandelver, like up to the point where you fight the Black Spider. Wait, no, not the Black Spider. Oh no, I forgot the mage's name. It's the it's the mage who's wearing the red cloak who's got the staff of defense. Uh, people who've played that game know what I'm talking about. Uh, that was yeah. smacking my wall. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I ran that, but I'm I'm drawing a blank on what that guy's name is. Or um, or the first portion of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, like up until you fight Sephic Caltro. So it, it looks like you could adapt a few things from Five E to this, and like the Renaissance Fair portion of um, Bald Down the Witchlight. All right, so we got some ideas for this. All right. Uh, maybe anything else you have on my, in mind? Because I think I've run out of things to say. Uh, no, I guess uh, it's good to point out again that we're, we're doing a review of a system that is still in alpha. It hasn't even hit 1.0 yet. So it's not... You get to join us in a year when this finally finishes. <laughs> or comes up with the beta. Yeah. Looking at this. And Sean, I finally read the book. There you go. <laughs> so go go send this video to him with that just that as a timestamp. <laughs> Alright. Um I'm gonna cut the recording. Okay. Alright. Uh G N as usual. All right, have a good night, people. All right, GM.